The Tao of Self-Confidence, episode 236. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a international broadcaster, so I'm really excited to have her on and share her story and tips on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Simone Hang. Simone, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Thank you so much, Sheena, for having me. Yeah, I am an Australian-raised, Singaporean Eurasian, I suppose the best way is to put it. Both of my uh, parents are uh, from Singapore. My mum is Eurasian going back to the 17th century, Portuguese and Dutch mixed from a place in Malaysia called Malacca. And my father is a Teochew Chinese. So I was born in Singapore, but raised in Australia and then gone on to live all over the world. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Simone, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I think be yourself. No one else can do it as well as you can. I love that. I mean, it's something that's really rare in this world today, just being ourselves. I mean, a lot of people out there kind of put on a mask and, you know, they feel like being our authentic self isn't something that's cool, (laughs) you know, but I think the more we're out there and showing ourselves who we truly are, that's when we can inspire others to do the same and say, it's okay to be yourself. It's okay if you're a little quirky or a little crazy. And, you know, it's, it's a good thing, right? Just to just to live and be your authentic self. So great quote. I love that. And in your own words, how would, how would you define self-confidence? Uh, well, firstly, just uh, on the quote that I just gave you, I think that's particularly difficult in the entertainment industry to actually be yourself because you, you have to slice up all the good bits and that's what you put forward. And you're basically taught to hide or decommodify all the things that are probably unlikable about you. And I think that the older you get, the more comfortable you get, you can do more. But when you first enter the industry, it's particularly difficult. You're, you're basically taught not to be yourself. So that, that quote means a huge amount to me. I think self-confidence has a lot to do with happiness. I think it comes from really, really knowing and being comfortable and loving yourself. And only when you do that can you truly radiate self-confidence, not in a loud, pushy way, which is probably what I was prone to in my youth, but in a way that you just glow from within. And people are attracted to being around you. So I think it stems from happiness. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I love how you said, you know, it doesn't have to be loud because a lot of people, I think, mistake self-confidence, that meaning you always have to be loud and boisterous when, you know, you can still have that quiet confidence and still be the person that you want to be. So I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. And Simone, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? I think that there was a lot of confusion and there was a lot of um, misplacing being loud and being obnoxious with actually being confident. Uh, it's quite been, it's actually quite a recent discovery for me. I think I never felt I fit in, particularly where I grew up. I never felt I fit in. And it wasn't until really I went to Dubai that I really felt that I was on the same page with a lot of people. And that was really a place where I belonged. And in general, me in living in a monoculture situation. So I've lived in Switzerland and also in Australia. Me and monocultures don't go well. I need to be in, I find that I have more self-confidence because the people around me are so interesting, diverse, ambitious, focused in these kind of expat environments. And they're very, the bag is very mixed in terms of experiences. I think those kind of people value what I bring to the world. And so I think that also helps with your self-confidence a little bit. I don't feel incongruous. I don't feel like I don't fit in. I think that although you have self-confidence from within and that's all really important, the universe also kind of validates a little bit. What's around you does also validate how you operate within the world. I don't know if that makes sense to you without me going a bit deeper into things, but I think you have to find your tribe is what I'm saying. And when you find your tribe, your life will be a lot easier because you bounce ideas off each other. You push each other to be better. When you're living in a place where you aren't with your tribe, uh, that can really dent your self-confidence. And I grew up in a place like that. And it was very difficult for me. Uh, I totally agree with you. You know, they always say you're the average of the five people you surround yourselves with. So surrounding is very important, especially when you're at a time when your confidence isn't that great. You know, you got to have people around you to kind of cheer you on and lift you up until you're ready to 
go out there and do your thing. And so what was that point in your life when you realized you can go out there and do it and you don't, you know, you, you it didn't matter if you fit in or not, or not, like you just had that confidence to do what you, you wanted to do. My father passed away in 2004. And that for me was the, without a doubt in my mind, was the huge push that I realized life. I actually, for the first time, I think I was nine, I was 19, felt my own mortality and realized, oh my goodness, we're not here forever. Like if you want to live this life, if you want to be the architect of your happiness and design this life that you want. From a very young age, I had an idea of the kind of life that I wanted. I wanted to travel a lot. I wanted to do what I love for a living and make money out of it. I wanted to have financial security. I wanted to own properties. I wanted to have amazing dining experiences. I wanted to have a stylish home. I had this life in mind and I knew that if I stayed in Perth, that it would never materialize. And I think I knew this, but it wasn't until my dad passed away that I was like, okay, lady, like you've got to go out and grab it. You're not on the planet forever. Life is actually quite short. So that was the point. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, if you want things to change, it has to start with you. It's your responsibility to go out there and just make it happen, happen regardless of, you know, your circumstances. And, you know, because of that realization, what's your life been like now? My life now is, my life in Dubai was even a bit more crazy. I think I have a better balance now. I think Dubai, I was, if you can imagine, I was 24 years old, 23 years old when I moved there. By 24, you know, I had my dream job with Virgin Radio which is basically like the McDonald's of radio stations. It really is like the biggest, most respected international radio network. Richard Branson was my boss. I got to meet him. Living opposite the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest tower. And I was, you know, I was very, very young and I had things very, very fast and was making very good money very quickly. And I think it was a little bit too much. I think now in Singapore, I have a really beautiful balance of time out as well as uh, working really hard. So, so now my life is perfect. Perfect for what I want. Everybody wants something different. But for what I envisage for my life, that's what I'm currently living now in Singapore. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I love that you said that it's perfect for you, right? Um, Because, you know, some people have this perception of, you know, what perfect should look like, because they're so consumed with other people's opinions that they don't end up living the life that you want. But you went out there, you did your own thing. And now, you know, you're living, you know, your true purpose. And it's great because it just shows others what's possible. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Stop listening to what other people say to you. Like, so when I started and I wanted to do this line of work, you know, my family, I come from a very conservative Catholic Asian family, um, and they are very critical. You know, part of it is a joking thing, like fresh off the boat, the mum. Jessica, okay, part of it is a joking thing, but there's also a lot of wanting you to value security. Entertainment was not something that was supported and no one really in my family had really any, there were people in the media, but not really in, in, in the entertainment industry. And there was a lot of people putting me down. And, and then at the same time, when I was in Dubai, there was a lot of people feeding my ego and building me up. And I think if I had not listened to either, I would probably have gotten to this happy place where I am now a lot quicker. So don't listen to what other people say, go with your gut know what you're feeling inside and what you want and follow it. I've always been quite lucky with that. But I do think that my journey to where I am now, so I'm now 32, I think this could have happened a lot earlier. Getting this real balance and this idea of actually what happiness is to me could have happened a lot faster if I'd listened less to other people, good or bad. Thanks for sharing that. And it's so true, right? Like, you know, growing up in an Asian culture, it's like we've been told to just, you know, go the safe route, get a job, you know, or go to school, get a job, get good grades, you know, get married. And it's like, you never rock the boat. And, you know, I also love fresh off the boat. I remember, you know, the mom, she's always like pestering her child to like, you know, get good grades, play the play the instrument that has, you know, <laughs> funding, you know, for college, like the piccolo. <laughs> and, um, but it, these are things that actually happen. And, you know, it, it, it's sad sometimes because there's a, a lot of people out there who feel like they're trapped because You know, they're so consumed with going through that path, not knowing there's other ways of living life. So, you know, that's great advice, you know, especially to all the listeners out there, because we're so consumed with other people's opinions that we forget to live by our own own rules or or listening to our own gut and learning to trust ourselves. So thanks so much. And um, if our listeners want to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, at Simone Hang on Instagram and uh, SimoneHang.com is the place to go for, you know, checking up on what I'm doing. I'm actually revamping it. So there's going to be some lifestyle tips and things on there. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Simone, you can also head on over to the TauofSelfConfidence.com and search for Simone's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I really just want to thank Simone for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Simone. You're very welcome. I hope I was helpful and not convoluted, but uh, yeah, I hope I was helpful. Yes, you were tremendously helpful. So (laughs) really grateful for it. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you later. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.